Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand as you are able to uh, open our service with Blessed Be Your Name. Take your time. and the privilege for us to gather this morning. Thank you for the abundance of your grace and your love and for all that you have and are doing and will continue to do for us, God, to be present with us in this place and everywhere we go, to shine your light into our hearts, that we may shine it elsewhere. God, and as we gather on these Sunday mornings for worship, you are at the center of all of it. Blessed be your name indeed. May our hearts be filled afresh and anew, renewed, restored, revitalize as we offer ourselves to you in worship. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome, everybody, to uh, worship. 
It's great to be here this morning. Good to see you all, as it is on every Sunday morning. Um, strange things happening in our world. Uh, it's certainly hard to ignore uh, the events of yesterday. I'll probably say more about that in our uh, in my sermon. We'll see where spirit leads in that. But um, wherever you stand and whatever your thoughts or opinions are about people or policies or whatever else, it is a tragic day. It was a tragic day in our country yesterday. So um, any kind of threat to democracy, I think, for us who believe in democracy is a terrible thing, again, regardless of where you stand. Um, Clearly a, a polarizing person, but nevertheless, it is complicated to say the least. So, um, yeah, our individual thoughts and opinions and beliefs, I think, are less important than the bigger picture of unity and community and all of those things that are so, uh, so prevalent in Scripture and so prevalent in Jesus' teachings that uh, in our world today it's easy to lose sight of. So, anyways, um, yeah, don't want to start this whole thing on that kind of a note, but um, it happened. So, I'm going to address it, right? Uh, we do have tear-offs for our bulletin for you guys to fill out, and we'll collect those during our offering. So, uh, and just a, I don't know, a, a, some, something of a recap, I guess, uh, on Friday uh, we, some of us from this church and many, many other people uh, gathered at uh, St. Margaret and Mary's Catholic Church in Chino uh, to celebrate the life of Miss Christian. Um, it, was a, it was a service. Lindy asked me how it was, and I, I never know how to assess a funeral or memorial or a <laughs> celebration of life. It is a mix of all kinds of different things. It is, it is both sadness and uh, celebration. For those of you who were there that heard the priest's message, you heard that the gospel was preached. Um, and um, we celebrate and rejoice uh, for Christy um, because of where she is, because of the hope that we have. But the other side of that coin is those of us who are left behind who continue to wonder and to question and to grieve the loss of a person that meant so much to so many people. But um, it was a, the service was well done. and. Yeah, and we still will continue. We're still continuing to plan to do something here um, as some kind of a remembrance celebration. It won't be that kind of a service, but something to recognize the many, many years of her service and to celebrate the life that she lived and the witness that she put out for all the world to see, especially the hundreds of children that she had. They were her kids, uh, and there were hundreds of them. So. We'll do that probably later in September or August. Wanted to give the family, her family, a chance to continue to process, especially after that kind of a service, and not run into something too quickly uh, on our own in, in our efforts to want to do that. And at some point, we'll, uh, whether that's before then or at that point, set up a memorial fund um, that will take offerings for a period of time uh, in her honor that will go to the preschool. Because I believe that's probably what she wants us to do. So, um, yeah. Wow. Crazy weekend. Nevertheless, we're here to worship, right? So let's continue to do that. Uh, because God's greater than all of it. At least that's what I think. So I'm going to go with that. Prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let's pray together. Oh God, from you come all holy desires, all the counsels, and all the just prayers. Give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and our souls of we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. the Lord 
beside a wall with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees, and the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This ends the first lesson. Thank you, to God. God. The second reading is from the New Testament book, Ephesians, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set, before in, set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This ends the second reading. We stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Tony, you're reading next week? I'm going with the incompetent. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'm working on it because I haven't learned to read yet. <laughs> I should be there by next week. Okay. You could always use an app on your phone and just hit play. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. 
For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed and yet liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask of me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Jeff and I share something in common with this uh, scripture. By the way, grace and peace to you, God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this is not our favorite Sunday uh, lectionary texts. Um, Jeff, it's hard for Jeff to find beheading songs when I sing in worship. There just aren't a lot of them in Christian liturgy. Um, heavy metal, though. Heavy metal, death metal, speed metal, yes. Plenty of beheadings. Probably not appropriate for worship, though. Uh, likewise, from uh, a preacher's perspective, not the easiest text to preach from. Uh, but my sort of weird mind thinks, what happened on Sundays when Sunday school classes would do crafts and arts and crafts on the readings of the gospel that day? <laughs> If you were a Sunday school teacher, would you just say, we're not going to talk about that one, kids? First lesson or second lesson? Yeah, we'll talk about Amos, the tender of the sycamore trees and the herdsmen. Uh, the beautiful writing from the book of Ephesians. But yeah, that, this, is, this is not necessarily an easy one. Uh, though in the context of scripture, uh, well, it's also not easy because it, it follows a series of miracles that Jesus has done as accounted by Mark's gospel. And then right after this is the feeding of the 5,000, which is probably next week's uh, gospel reading. It just plopped down right in the middle of it. Um, and it's left for um, scholars, theologians, and people like me to figure out why, why would Mark include this story in this book? Well, it's, there's a lot of Reasons. Part of it is uh, in, in Mark's gospel, well, and in all of the gospels, uh, identity is, the, is an issue. It, it follows in that, well, it makes sense that in the first century, when most of these texts were written, the gospels particularly, decades, a few decades after Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, that people would naturally wonder... Who was this Jesus? I don't, well, I don't have to remind you that in the first century, things were quite different. Communication was not anything like it is today. Um, and the incarnation and who Jesus was and what Jesus did were so far beyond anything that any human being could have ever imagined that God would do that those questions naturally arose. Uh, in addition to that, human beings being who we are, are going to 
misunderstand, misuse, and even uh, many try to take advantage of things for their own gain, whether that's financial or any other way. Um, it's human nature. It's just the way that we are. So a lot of these stories in scripture, the miracles themselves, and then something like this is, who is this Jesus? Herod, in the beginning of this, thought maybe he was John the baptizer. Others thought he was Elijah. This will be repeated uh, later in Mark's gospel. Somebody who's another prophet. Um, he's often referred to as rabbi or teacher. Those things barely begin to describe who Christ is and was. We believe, uh, and I know, or we know, that he was both um, human and fully God. That he was so far beyond just the human Jesus, and far beyond the things that he did and said. Um, he was doing something that is still to this day and will never be understood. This is our reality, but this is also our struggle. This has always been the struggle of humanity. It is what it was, was at the heart of the disobedience and betrayal of Adam and Eve. We want to be God. We want God to do what we want God to do. That's what's at the heart of it. Um, and throughout scriptures, whenever we read uh, the narratives of scripture from the Old Testament and the New Testament, the problems that human beings have is they want God to do what they want God to do. Or they just want to be God. The people that God chose, in spite of the fact that he did countless miracles and protected and preserved and blessed and saved them throughout their history, every time would turn from him because God wasn't doing it the way they wanted him to do it. That's, I mean, really in its most basic form what it boils down to. Thank you, God, for doing those amazing things, but we wish you would have done it differently. Or this is how I would have done it if I were God. And God, okay. <laughs> and I think I've been preaching about this for weeks, but it's still relevant because of the text that we have. And uh, even with the New Testament and the stories of Jesus and the gospel and the head-scratching responses that people had and continue to have to him, again, reveal the fact that we might acknowledge who he is, but we still want Jesus to do things the way we want him to do them. And I, I will uh, take a risk and say you all fall into that category just as I do. I don't often include us all together in this. Generally, I try to make it about myself and hope that you see something in yourself that reflects that, but um, and, unless you are free from sin, I, I'm, uh, I don't, I, nope, nope, don't see anybody out there. Uh, <laughs> not one of you. You're the same way. We are. And it, it is the continuing struggle of humanity in pushing back against a holy and righteous God. And it's just, it's hard, and it's confusing. And as I thought about this passage, and as I thought about the events of the most recent events in our country's history, just trying to piece things together, and there are a million thoughts going through my head. Is there a way to explain this? Is there a way to relate it to something else? Is it in any way relatable to uh, Christ and the in injustice of his death and the answer to that is absolutely not there are no Christ like figures in this world anymore there was one singular 
and there will only ever be one, regardless of the kind of injustice. And even us as Christians, when we get pushed back, we are not, <laughs> we're not in the same boat as Jesus. When he said, you should be willing to pick up your cross if you want to follow me, he was not inviting us to, to see ourselves as Christ-like figures, period. And, unless something you do can provide eternal life and redemption and restoration and righteousness for all of humanity and creation, unless you have the ability to do that by your suffering or, or your martyrdom or whatever else, um, uh, no, you're, no. Uh -uh. But Jesus doesn't call us to be like him. I, I, I got the whole what would Jesus do thing from years and years ago, but I also struggle with that because I, I ain't Jesus. To even begin to think that I could be like or, or understand what Jesus would do in every given situation is... I don't know that there's a word for it. It's foolishness, and it's very basically. But that's how we are. That's sometimes who humanity, and I'm not referring to any of you individually or myself, but how often do we, human beings, step in and decide or say to Jesus or say to God, you know what, I got this. I figured this whole thing out and I would like to be in charge of this endeavor. I would like to be in charge of this opinion or thought or situation. I would like to be the one to decide who's in and who's out. I would like to be the one to decide who Jesus loves and who he doesn't love. When Jesus never said that to us, Scripture never tells us to be Jesus. Jesus didn't say, be me. He said, follow me. Which necessarily means he will always be in charge. And in that following, there is a tacit agreement on our behalf to say, I'm going to let you lead. Any of you dancers? Just want to be. <laughs> I'm not a dancer. Although I did many, many years ago uh, for my first wedding take dance lessons because um, I thought it would be a really fun thing to have a preset dance move for our first dance. No, I didn't. <laughs> Wasn't my idea. <laughs> But let's have a routine that we could do on our first dance. Um, and most of you did not know my first wife, Tracy, but uh, she was a fairly assertive person. She liked to be in charge. Um, but the dance instructor would say, no, 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 you have, one of you has to lead. <laughs> well, you can lead. I was given, didn't, didn't, I don't know how many times, like, yeah, we were tripping over each other and everything else, and the instructor would say, who's leading? <laughs> I was given that opportunity, but in practice, it just didn't work. And, and again, that's how we are. We love all of the wonderful things that Jesus has done for us and offered to us, we love all of the things in Scripture that talk about we're beloved and we're cherished and we're saved and we're redeemed and we can't out sin God's grace and all of those things, but we don't love the ones so much that say love your neighbor or love your enemy and pray for them. Raise your hand if you like that one. <laughs> And there are countless other examples of that in the scriptures. Where we as human beings, 
like to pick and choose the good ones, but the ones that we don't necessarily jive with, yeah, he wasn't serious about that, right? I mean, that's, that's the option. That's an option for us. The truth is, it's not. Because again, when we do that, we decide who's God and who's not. But it is our nature. And that plays itself out in our society, in our world, and in humanity in every single way. In almost every situation where things go wrong, you can point to that. I'm not going to say it's sin, because that annoys my wife. But it is us wanting to be God. Which, by the way, is what the heart of sin is. <laughs> that we think we have a better plan and a better idea and a solution to the problems of this world. There is only one person, one entity, that has the solution to the problems of this world. And that's God. He's the God over all of it. And in his infinite wisdom, a decision that God made that I'm not pleased with, he didn't take away the sins of humanity. He took away the consequences of sin for those who believe. The rest of it still exists. And again, Jesus didn't say when he ascended into heaven, Go out and solve all the world's problems. You're in charge. You got this. I'm checking out. He didn't say that. He said, go. Throughout all the world, baptize in my name, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach people the things that you have heard. It's not crystal clear, but it was pretty clear. We just have a hard time with that. I have a hard time with that. And even in the circumstances of an attempted assassination yesterday, my initial thoughts were my human emotions and biases. I'm not going to tell you what I thought. I'll leave that up to you. No, I probably should, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Just leave it at that. But the reality of it is, and, and Lindy was great in pointing this out, it's like other people died. That's, that's been the part of it that's been kind of left out. Like one person's dead and two people, last I heard, were in critical condition that were innocent in all of this, that had nothing to do with it. That we're simply at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that this is a tragedy for that reason, but also just the fact that it even happened. I'd like to think I'm better than that, but I'm not. Thank you for pointing those things out, Lindy. <laughs> she is much kinder than I am and has a much more Christ-like view of the world, um, which is one of the amazing traits and one of the countless reasons why I love her so much. But again, it puts a mirror up to me and says, what is wrong with you? Well, I'm human. So I don't know what the takeaway from all of this is. I mean, the letter to the Ephesians that Whoever wrote that, it wasn't Paul, but whoever wrote that, if you go back and read those verses, it is just one bullet point after another after another of how unbelievable and amazing and grace-filled God has been toward us over and over and over, even then and 2,000 years later, all of it. What God has done for all of us, that we don't deserve but at the end of it, did you, did you hear the for so that? Did you hear that part of it? That God just didn't do it because, you know, 
He just felt like it. Then knowing all of that, and trusting in all of that, and believing all of that, so that we may live to his praise and glory. Ouch. There's a directive that came with all of that? Well, kind of. Thankfully, despite our humanness, we do have the resources and the tools. And there is this thing called sanctification. It is a fancy church word that means we are ever evolving into more and more of the idealized life of the gospel in this world. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, that by being part of a church community, that by the accountability that comes with being a part of this body of Christ, and the promises that God is always working on us. That we are not yet a completed work. And if we have that humility to understand that. That we can grow and that we can be changed. And your wife can remind you of things that as a pastor you should already know. That there is still room for improvement for each of us. And there is certainly room for improvement in this world. But we're not supposed to fix the world. Let's fix ourselves as much as we can before we start stepping on other people. But let us also not forget that the things that we do matter in ways that we'll never understand because that's the way that God planned it. I'm sorry if that doesn't work for you. I, yeah. I want some of that glory. I want to get some credit. I want to see all the fabulous things that I do and how they impact other people. No. Sorry. It's my glory. We do all that. We receive all that God has given us for His praise and, and for His glory. And as Paul wrote in the book of 1 Corinthians, you are not your own. None of us are. That he paid for us. And the cost was incredibly high. That we may live and love and serve a God that has done all of that for us. Good reminder for us in a crazy, crazy world. Amen. Yeah. I want you to watch Lindy play an air guitar on this one. <laughs> this, is, this is a fast song she loves to play. She's got a bad wrist, so it's, <laughs> it's muscle memory. She can't help. Benny Sermon, real quick. So, uh, I have resources online that I look up to help me pick songs each week. I, how this works is I get the readings. Uh, that I read them, I pray over them, and then I read the gospel for this week. I'm like, uh, that's it. Like said, not, not a whole lot of, not a lot, not a whole lot of beheading songs in the Christian library music. So I had to come up with something. Um, and one of the resources, like the, the author of, of this website, literally said, "Sorry, this is random. If you can find a song that works better for the reading, please email me." <laughs> um, so this is just one of those things that I, I know a lot of pastors actually take this Sunday off in particular and put it on a forest supply pastor uh, as a substitute. But uh, for me, going over the gospel reading, one of the things that struck me is actually very interesting about the story, um, besides the beheading and the cool part of that, because that, you know, that's, that's newsworthy, as John is in prison, he has talks with Herod. And Herod loved hearing him. He had made discussions with Herod. And that's a really powerful thing. And so and I think about Paul in prison and I'm thinking, like, everybody's persecuted. And so that's why, like, the song choices, like, you know, blessed be your name, you know, you get it take away, uh, whether, you know, my lighthouse, uh, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. And also, you know, the last song that we're going to do is going to reflect that 
John's not in a good place. Paul's usually never in a good place when he's writing anything, um, even if it isn't Paul that wrote that. Um, even in the dark places, God is there shining out, and God is there shining on John. God is shining on all of us now. And that is the relevance that I'm adding on to this song. Uh, this is a new one for us here at Grace, unless you've done Crucio, in which case you've heard this place before. I have not, so this will be fun for everybody. So please stand as you are able as we sing My Lighthouse. Um, fairly dependent if you have picked it up as we go along. Don't follow the tambourine class. Mm -hmm. But follow the tambourine class. <laughs> this is kind of a bounce song. Mm -hmm.
confess our faith to you from the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge us with the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and my life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, join me now as we lift up our prayers of praise and thanks and intercession for this world. Almighty and merciful God, we offer to you our praise and our thanks. Praising you for your wisdom and justice, for your truth. Praising you for your power and your authority. For the ways in which you exercise that in love and grace. And we thank you, God, that in the midst of the darkness of our world sometimes and in our own lives, you are that place of light. Reminder for us that you are always in charge, even when it doesn't seem like it, and even when we try to steal your glory, God. You never take offense. You continue to bless us. So we thank and praise you. Merciful God. Praise you our prayer. We lift up to you. Almighty God, prayers for a broken world, for the individuals like us living in it, dealing with the trials that are a part of this world. We pray for healing and hope. We pray for peace and strength. For all who have need. especially those on our prayer list and those we lift up to you now in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. Thank you, God, for allowing us and inviting us to witness to your greatness, God. Stand out and to be a light in the darkness. Not to be the light, but a reflection of it in this world. Even through our imperfections, you are able to impact others around us eternally. We're not worthy of that, God. <clears throat> But help lead us and guide us in this world and in our own lives to see ourselves as beloved and cherished. May we may treat others similarly. Merciful God. For those unspoken prayers and for the things in our heart that are difficult, God, we lift those up to you, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please turn and share God's peace with one another. <laughs>
stand as you are able. Pray with your heart gifts. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O oh God, maker of all things, through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered, in feeding the world with your love, the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is right to give our thanks and praise. Indeed. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples, took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to them to eat, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took a cup of wine, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also in remembrance of me. Remembering Jesus in the bread and wine, let's pray the prayer that he taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. These are the gifts of God for you, God's people. All are welcome. <clears throat> oh, my dreams. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. Amen. Uh, announcements for today. I'm sure there's something. There still are printed newsletters in the back, the offering or the mid-year contribution statements, if you haven't picked those up already, which I think most all of you have. Those are also in the back. No, you haven't been here, so... You've got yours and your parents. I was going to say, is there one for my parents? Yeah. So grab those before you go. 
Um, stick around for coffee and donuts. And, uh, just uh, one, well, a couple updates on people that we've been talking about and praying for. Uh, Charlene, most, well, a lot of you probably know she's out of the hospital. Still, I hope. Um, I don't know if they figured out what was going on, but she's at home feeling better. Uh, uh, Denise Hadley's not having as much success with her recovery. So she's still battling and battling hard. Uh, but um, yeah, struggle in a lot of ways. So continue to pray for them and the rest of the folks on our, on our prayer list. So I think those are the only announcements I have. Just looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're vice president of council. Sure thing. <laughs> well, then, good. let's sing another song. Please stand as you are able.
and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and in all things fill you with his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship here has ended. Now our service Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is amazing grace. Thank you.